Once again it's springtime and time for our annual staff trip. This time we're forsaking the beaches to discover a little more about the beautiful island of Taiwan, formerly Formosa. We've just arrived at Hong Kong airport and are making our way to the plane. Today, Mandarin Airlines will fly us there. It's a small plane, an E-190. Thank goodness we're not on a Boeing 737 MAX. I like the 2-2 seating. Plenty of room too. Already on the plane, we're on Mandarin Airlines. Rachel has been writing oriental music with cool percussion. The adventure begins. Taiwan is actually one of the nearest places that we can visit from here. The language there is Mandarin, so we can get around okay. Hong Kong to Taichung takes an hour and 10 minutes. We're soon arriving. It's not my first visit here. In fact, I've been here a few times. But the last visit was just 30 years ago. I've heard it's made some major strides forward since that time. Our plan is to catch a bus into town. It takes an hour and drops us only three minutes from our hotel. So we bought a bus card, called an Easy Card, available at Family Mart or 7-Eleven at the airport, which means we get the first 10 kilometers of any ride free. So the trip only cost us about a dollar. First impression is that it's clean and efficient. The bus ride was quick and smooth. After exactly 65 minutes we arrived right in the center of Taichung and walked over the road to our hotel. That's the main railway station there. Hotel 53 was perfect. Great staff, friendly and helpful. The hotel clean, quiet and number one location and good sized beds in fact everything was excellent including the price the lobby tastefully decorated and yes that's a Harley bike In minutes, we were off discovering. The name Taichung means Central Taiwan. Our hotel is therefore in the center of the center of Taiwan. The higher bicycles were the best I've seen, orderly, called U-bikes. They were certainly ubiquitous. But we passed on the bikes in favor of a stroll. If it looks like we're walking fast, it's because we are. Everybody is hungry. Actually, you'll never catch this on the video, but this place has its own particular smell I don't mean that in a bad way but rather the aromas of all the products on sale as we pass by the other thing we engage in is people watching we're not walking aimlessly our purpose is to book a tour to the Sun Moon Lake tomorrow which we did
then headed to the place where we'll eat dinner. A delightful little shopping centre with great restaurants and where we plan to have a snack. In the December restaurant overlooking the bridge. Nice place. Saogong Gaozi That steamed dumplings that you eat after you get off work with a nice view very nice shopping area this is actually where we'll eat tonight a shabu shabu hot pot But in the meantime, we'll walk over the road to the park. A very beautiful park it is too. The Taichung Park, resplendent with fountains that dance. It was a beautiful place with a lake in the center and trees and flowers and even some wildlife. Apparently it was previously occupied by hillocks, wetlands and a bamboo forest. And an old graveyard. The lake here is named Sun Moon Pond and it was completed in 2007. Here comes the wildlife. It was a very peaceful interlude. Just what we needed. Typical Chinese lake, surrounded by iconic Chinese water lilies, bird song in the air. Taichung is known as the culture city, and it certainly lived up to its reputation, right in the center of this busy city, an oasis of calm and beauty. The centerpiece of the park is a remnant from the Taiwan Lantern Festival in the Year of the Goat, depicting a spirited ram and an ewe feeding her lamb. The whole creation on a pedestal shaped like Yushan Mountain. 
Many doves and pigeons make the park their home, and the occasional flutter is always a spectacle. Time to call home? Not really, just a photo. Then a stroll over for the Shabu Shabu. When in Macau last month, we got the bus to return to Hong Kong and met an old friend who said he was now living in Taichung and who'd been servicing aeroplanes in Macau Airport at the time. So we met up with him and were able to catch up on what's been happening. The restaurant was actually not very cheap, about $25 a head. The decor was very nice. We chose the meats we wanted, seafood and steak, and both were excellent. Three kinds of steak. Then out into the night for a leisurely stroll back to the hotel saying joy gain to our friend Gotwai. Then we were able to see a little of the city by night. I ate too much. No joke. We needed this walk to walk off the meal. The pavement having built-in reminders of where we were. Actually, Taichung by night is a pretty place. A river and a stream cut through the city and they're both illuminated by night. The stroll actually became a fixture each evening of our visit to take in the sights and walk off the calories. Then a really big surprise. Something I'd never heard of or read about, which is amazing. The Miyahara store was originally an ophthalmic hospital founded by Dr. Miyahara Takakuma during the Japanese occupation of Taiwan. The building was damaged by an earthquake and strong typhoon but later restored by the well-known Dawn Cake Company here, who now sell ice cream, pineapple tarts, chocolates, and tourist gifts. My first reaction was this is the most amazing store I ever visited. A special environment and 100 year old decor. Harry Potter-esque for sure. Like being in Hogwarts. I expected a witch on a broom to come flying through at any time. It didn't happen. I did see a crouching tiger. The dragon must have been hiding.
Upon entering the building, it, it felt as if we were going back a hundred years. There's a restaurant on the second floor serving Taiwanese cuisine and afternoon tea. I love the atmosphere, especially the tall bookcases and staircase. I share the same birthday with Miyahara Takakuma, who built the eye clinic in 1927. The central atrium gives the place a spectacular feel to it. A great place to browse. The decor of the place it was a pleasure to behold. Outside, there were ants on the pavement. and photogenic touches. Now for the ice cream. Attached but not connected to the store. Excellent ice cream. And the price, though high, compares to other high-end ice cream establishments. Anticipation. About 20 different chocolate flavors and many others. and many toppings. We are paper spoon strawberry. Wow, very good, a very good flavor. It was fun. We all got one and everybody tried everybody else's flavors. It's been a great day and we all felt like she did. Our hotel just over the road. Time to check my emails and messages on the free Wi-Fi and then off to bed. We had a wonderful first day, but as we begin another day, there's certainly anticipation in the air and blue skies overhead. We've booked a trip and are walking over to get the morning brew. Do you want to come with us today? Come with me as I relive it myself. The scenic Sun Moon Lake. On the way to Sun Moon Lake and a uh, beautiful sunny day. And it looks like we're going to have a great time. It's actually a two hour bus ride. but it gives us the opportunity to see the Taiwan countryside. Great scenery on the way. That's the statue of Dr. Sun Yat-sen, father of the nation of China. We're soon arriving. It's been an interesting bus ride.
So we arrived at the Sun Moon Lake and the first stop is the bathroom stop. The usual exhortation, stand a little closer. We make our way over to the boat, getting our bearings. Getting some water. Making the plans. So far the weather is holding up. This is fun. The boat is one horsepower. Off we go. The boat will take us to another part of the lake where there is the Sunguang Temple and nice views. So we basically cross to the other side of the lake. It's difficult to capture the mood of the place, but it was a very enjoyable ride. Plenty of things to shoot, and a real pleasure to be here. On arriving, we have a very short walk to the base of the temple. It's the first time I ever saw a horse mascot on a boat. Sun Moon Lake has become a very popular tourist destination in recent times. A local Taiwan indigenous folk group were playing. Very nice too. So we ascended the steps. There was a strange island nearby called Lalu Island that was surrounded by floating man-made gardens. Very interesting. The temple containing Buddhist sutras, clearly also including other traditional elements of Chinese religion. Then we returned to take a boat to another part of the lake, from where we can take the Sun Moon Ropeway. Yeah, we've uh, just taken another uh, boat ride and uh, about to explore another part of this place. There were many restaurants and shops here and we took a walk around. There were again interesting sights. I decided on a snack and a chat with the lady selling the sausages. When she said, you can speak Chinese, I told her I couldn't speak English. Joking. Tasty? Yes. Healthy? No comment. So we took a walk around. Interesting place.
Enjoy chatting with the people. This is bean curd. The people all friendly. Then time for lunch, local food. Cabbage, mushroom, omelette, fish, shrimp, and pork. Then off to the cable car, much more in store for us. We're having fun, but really looking forward to the cable car over the mountain. It's actually called the Sun Moon Lake Ropeway, and a five minute stroll along the coast gets us there. As usual, passing interesting sights on the way. There's even a hotel there. The honey shop sported a flat beehive with a glass wall. Apparently these can be situated inside a house. The lady explained to us. We can walk the trail up if we prefer, but we didn't prefer. He clearly agrees. Pork snacks on the way. Fishermen at play. Soon arriving. Hong Kong people love blossoms. Japanese style gardens very popular here. The colorful ropeway. So we ascend and soar over the mountain top, peaceful. Being at Sun Moon Lake, I suppose we're now being flown to the moon, and here are the stars. Just when we thought we'd reached the top, 
I realized this is some cable car hanging a thousand feet or more above the valley. I forgot to mention it has a glass floor. So we get drone-like shots. Well, we are on the ropeway. It's very quiet in this uh, gondola. We're about oh, a thousand feet off the ground. And just really enjoying some amazing views out the windows. On the other side of the mountains was the Formosan Aboriginal Culture Village, which unfortunately we didn't have time to see, but which looked very interesting. As the name indicates, the Formosan people are the original inhabitants of the island. There are some shops and snack places there. So we jump back on the gondola for the ride back to Sun Moon Lake. Can you spot me passing? We'll now get a, a bus that will take us around the lake. Just have a little view, but we're losing the sunshine. But still, it's a lot of fun. Do you like my hat? It's a gift from a good friend in England who super blessed me it's insured against loss, guaranteed for life, and replaced if it ever wears out. Wow! So we go back to Taichung City. I love their buses. Let me try a wide angle. Maybe a slow mo. We soon arrived at the train station, right in the center of town, quite near our hotel, and at just the right time to take night shots. The old station next to it. If you want good night shots, Always shoot after the lights come on, but before it gets really dark. Contrast is just right at that time. Colors not washed out. In some ways, Taichung reminds me of Japan. The feel of the place, friendly people, clean and safe. And the mix of old and new. A poster of the wetlands, where we will visit next. The trains on time. But it's time to eat. The railway station offers a number of places and we decided on a Japanese treat. Divide the prices by 30 to get US dollars. Food was delicious and cheap. 
Four dollars. Two fifty. There was even a Japanese lady behind me in the line. We had a chat. As you can see, we enjoyed the food. That's mackerel, chicken, pork soup, soba, bean curd, fried chicken, curry chicken, all very cheap. Then a stroll back to the hotel, passing some fun places. An ice cream waffle parlor with an amazing variety of waffles. Then more shopping in Miyahara. Finally, another walk by the river. This time, what looks like a night heron trying to catch dinner. One of many. So we get to see wildlife right in the center of the city. Then it's time to sleep. Early breakfast. Finally, we got ready to visit the wetlands. Then a pleasant walk to get a coffee. Interesting sights along the way. the Paris building we're waiting for a bus that will take us to the university opposite is Electric Street electrical products sold here short trip It's certainly a very modern city. On the campus, rural scenes. One of the attractions is the Luca Chapel, a modern building that reaches toward heaven, so to speak. Ladies first, and all the guys are waiting for the ladies to come first, and the ladies are not so active today. A tourist asked me, is this Chinatown? I thought for a minute, and then I said, yes. So we headed back into town. Because we'll have the best buffet lunch in town.
Location Top City. About to have a seafood buffet. They had everything here. It was super popular with the locals. I can resist anything but temptation. Check this out. That was a fantastic buffet meal and cost about 25 US dollars. Just really amazing. The plan now is to visit the renowned Gaume wetlands. So we walked over to join the tour that we booked that was leaving from the National Taichung Theater, a beautiful complex nearby. Looking forward to the trip. Met up with some others who were coming with us. We were soon heading out. After a great lunch, we're heading for the Gaume wetlands. About 35 kilometers away, 40 minutes on the bus, the wind turbines soon coming into view. It's a very popular place to visit, especially at sunset. And as we arrive, it looks like we're in for a great sunset. The U-bikes, ubiquitous as usual. The typhoon of 2015 destroyed six of the 18 wind turbines. Some say they're ugly. I think the smog created from burning coal is more ugly so we enjoy the smog-free air. A walkway has been constructed to allow visitors to keep their feet dry and the wildlife undisturbed. So we join the crowds and take the walk out, being reminded there's an abundance of wildlife here. The platform carefully constructed in such a way as to allow the visitor to observe the wildlife, which they certainly do. The fiddler crabs abundant as they search for the next meal. They're called fiddler crabs because as they use their claws to feed, they look like they're playing violins. I must say that I was fascinated by the fact that some have left claws, some have right claws, and some only have small claws. The simple reason is that the females have two small ones, and if the male loses the large claw, it will develop one on the opposite side after the next molt. 
these are two males and they're about to fight, not mate. The small mudfish are also fascinating. They can exist out of the water by breathing through their skins and even bury themselves and hibernate for months. Fascinating to watch it all. If you're here, don't just glance at the wildlife. Observe. So here's a shot of a crab fiddling. The big claw is the fiddle or violin. The walkway is made of wooden slats. I have to say that it was a very enjoyable walk out to the sea. The sun setting and the sights all around made for a wonderful afternoon. Looking back, it was colourful. Contrejour was a completely different feeling. Great for photography. We were fortunate to get a nice sunset. At the end of the walkway, we all discarded our footwear to experience the sea. And get our pictures. Shooting into the sun, delivering dynamic images. It was really an enjoyable afternoon. So back to Taichung, anticipating our next place to visit, the famous night market.
after a great day at the wetlands we're hungry and what better way to end the day than a visit to what is reputed to be the largest night market in Taiwan the Fengjia night market right in the center of Taichung it's seven o'clock on a beautiful spring evening and the market is in full swing and we meet a delightful group of students they wanted a selfie with me so we made a memory I have to say these teenagers made my day very special people so much fun There's a great atmosphere here. Everybody friendly. The aroma of the food cooking was a great enticement to buy, which we did. Taiwanese satay, no charcoal, the quick way to sear the meat. Sea salt for flavor. Though black pepper and cayenne pepper flavors were available, and the best beef. This is a wonderful place and we're just gonna have some Angus beef, one US dollar per stick. Very cheap. You can see that Alison was really looking forward to it. I know she was very hungry and it tasted great as you can see. Watermelon, 60 cents a cup. The real thing. Being close to the ocean, seafood is a speciality here. Cooked in a variety of ways. Cheap too. 30 Taiwan dollars to a US dollar. Work it out. A basket full of oysters for $10. Guaranteed to give you Chiang Kai-shek's revenge. Just joking. Cuttlefish. The onion pie was popular. Cabbage, onion, and egg on a griddle. The cook clearly ambidextrous. The capacity of Allison's stomach is number one in Taichung. This is the karaoke booth, three dollars for half an hour. We love just walking around. The flavor of the lamb kebabs reminded me of the Hui boys in Xi'an. Cumin flavor. 
with more melon drinks. It was good. The lamb uh, in uh, kind of northern style, Xinjiang style, is very popular. It was so good, I forgot to film it. I ate two already. As you can see, there's not many cars. It's a pedestrian zone. But time to go back to the hotel. A bus sounds like a great idea. Okay, on the bus. Very quick, convenient. It's been a fantastic day. Our last day. As time is limited, we decided to simply explore more of the city. After all, it's a great place. First stop for coffee. People here love their coffee. We then walked over to the old railway station. A relic of Japanese rule, albeit a beautiful relic. In stark contrast to modern Taichung that surrounds it. Interesting sign. It says Jesus is Lord in Chinese. Religious freedom is here. In fact, fun things are all around. The main place we'll visit today is the Cultural Heritage Park. Though I was disappointed that the culture of the Formosan people, who've lived here for thousands of years, was not represented. It was nevertheless an interesting place. Noah's Ark getting a new look. The main thrust of the place appeared to be commercial rather than cultural, but that may reflect the observation that most tourists are more interested in shopping than in culture. This is a wonderful experience, we're having a lot of fun. Umbrellas are favorite here, where they are used to protect both from the rain and the sun. The shops were certainly the focus of the place. It was nevertheless fun.
Actually, a very interesting place. Thoroughly enjoyed this. Then more shopping and coffee. Finally, it was lunchtime. Japanese food on the menu. Then back to Hong Kong. It had been a really great holiday.